Now, in the most hilarious and ironic news of the day, week, maybe even a year, CM Punk and Jim Cornette have the same lawyer. Now, before I get into this, I am trying to hit 3,600 subs before the end of the week. I need about 70 more people to do so. Hit that subscribe button for your boy. I definitely appreciate it. And you would appreciate it, too, because if you don't hit that subscribe button, I'm going to be under your bed. So hit that subscribe button, man. Or I'm going to be under your bed. Now, <laughs> CM Punk. CM Punk and A Steel both have Stephen P. New. Now, if you watch Jim Cornette, if you've caught the latter end of his videos, you might get a you might get a, 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 a advertisement out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? They very good at them transitions into advertisement, advertising. So the you, you would know who Stephen P. New is. So CM Punk and A Steel, it turns out that they have the same lawyer. And when they say, and you know, there's a lot that you can take from this. When you think about now, if you look at it from AEW's perspective, you might be looking at it with the fish eye, like, all right, you know, that's kind of suspicious. You know, you got the same lawyer as somebody who really dislikes us and really likes you, and they just knew all this accurate information about the backstage stuff that was going on, and they have your side, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, what's really going on? But if you look at it, I mean, me, I'm going to just look at it from my perspective. These are two people I probably admire the most in wrestling right now, given the fact that, you know, an honorable mention, Bray Wyatt, of course, but, he, you know, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. So these two are the most people, like, I, when I think about wrestling, I think about these two people right now, Jim Cornette and CM Punk, and I would love for one day to just have CM Punk on Jim Cornette's podcast or something, but... And, you know, unfortunately, there are NDAs, and it turns out the only person who can actually talk about what happened in AEW with Brawl Out is A Steel's wife. And I'm sure they'll make a book out of it and make some money off of it. And they should, and wish they should. But I would love CM Punk to be on Jim Cornette's podcast. It would be amazing. I would pay good money to see that. I would probably sell my channel to somebody if they could do that. Probably not. But I think, man. I, I don't know if I'm being honest, you know, it's just, I don't, I, I'm not a believer in s stuff when it's like too coincidental. Like, you know, again, looking at it from AEW's perspective, like, bro, like maybe our biggest hater and somebody we fired just so happened to have the same lawyer. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Who knows? I know Stephen P. New has done some big cases and stuff like that. But out of all the lawyers, you got that lawyer. Now, again, I'm someone who's never had to hire a lawyer. So I don't know how necessarily it works. I don't know how you go about finding a lawyer. I'm not sure how you go about hiring a lawyer. But this is hilarious to me. <laughs> and I think it's I think it's funny that, you know, they all got over on him, and I think they all escaped the asylum. Jim Cornette seen seen the forest from the trees before it even started. If you don't know, Tony Khan really wanted Jim Cornette involved with AEW from the jump. And this, if you also don't know, Jim uh, Tony Khan wanted CM Punk involved with AEW from the jump, and. You know, both obviously didn't work out, but on one end, Jim Cornette was like, no, I'm good. Because it wasn't just the, like, it wasn't just the business side of it that he didn't like. He didn't like Tony Khan the way he talked. He didn't like the way that the elite were going to have a, a a huge part in being EVPs. And if you don't know who the elite is, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, et cetera, et cetera. So he didn't like that. I'm not sure how he feels about Cody Rhodes, but. He didn't like that. He didn't like how they had such prominent roles in the, you know, as higher ups in the AEW. And he saw the forest from the trees. He didn't know how long, like, he didn't know that they would last as long. But like Jim Cornette says, hundreds of millions of dollars will get you a long way and it'll put off the ine inevitable for a very long time. And I think, you know, it took CM Punk. Although you can blame CM Punk for a lot of things, I think he definitely exposed a lot about AEW. He showed the, like, okay, like he went there with good intentions. He went there thinking that 
what he saw that they did for Brody Lee and for what they did a lot, you know, a lot of what they did could be replicated and he could add on to that. But the whole dirt sheet stuff that they did to Jim Cornette too and they did to Cody Rhodes, the whole spreading of, you know, stuff to the dirt sheets like they did to, you know, other people they did to him. And CM Punk is not somebody who, like, you know what I'm saying, like, Luckily, like, unfortunately, like, Jim Cornette either isn't either. Like, Jim Cornette isn't somebody to bite his tongue either, but he had an NDA. CM Punk didn't have an NDA. The brawl out or the, the, the media scrum that when CM Punk went scorched earth, that's Jim Cornette if Jim Cornette didn't have an NDA. Jim, Jim Cornette already goes scorched earth, and he don't even have – and he has an NDA. So imagine if he didn't. So now that CM Punk does have an NDA, he can't necessarily go about – the way like he can't necessarily talk about it i like do i don't not sure how people are forced to sign ndas or something like that man i, I feel like nda shouldn't even be legal <laughs> with the, like to be honest with you but that's like the one great thing that tony khan has done making these people sign ndas because that's the last thing he really wants because tony khan is obsessed with twitter he's obsessed with people's perception of him and i wish Stephen p new could have negotiated them NDAs away, but, you know, it is what it is. Everybody's happy. Everybody's away from each other. Everybody's doing what they want to do. Uh, Tony Khan isn't selling tickets, but he's putting on, you know, he's putting on wrestling shows. So I'm sure he's happy, maybe. I hope he is. I hope he's okay. He doesn't necessarily seem like it. Jim Cornette, from what I could hear in his voice, because <laughs> I never see his face, he seemed like he's happy. Seems like he's making a lot of money just talking about something he loves, and it's great. And he, again, he saw the forest from the trees, and he'll be okay. He'll be okay. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just keep thinking about the fact that Jim Cornette and CM Punk teamed up to take down AEW. Um, but CM Punk, he looks happy as ever. He looks healthy as ever, and I can't wait for his next run. And I can't wait for him. Honestly, I'm looking more forward to what he does in NXT than his main roster run, to be honest with you. But we'll get there when we get there, and I'm going to just enjoy what he's doing now. But, yeah, I, I, it, it's, it's sad that AEW is in the state that it's in, especially given two years ago where it was just – it couldn't miss. But it is what it is. You reap what you sow, and uh, it sucks. It sucks. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Again, I am trying to hit 3,600 subs before the end of the week. If you like my scatterbrain thoughts, hit that subscribe button, please. Uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. All that YouTube nonsense. Happy holidays from you to you and yours. I appreciate you guys so much. It's been an amazing year. Let's make 2024 a better one. Sub the act. Peace. I'll be forgetting my outro.